Hey, welcome back to the channel if you've been here before and uh, welcome if you're new. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how I kind of roughly how I go about reupholstering the seat. Um, for that Jeep pickup that I picked up, I needed a seat that was about 58 to 60 inches wide. I wanted a bench seat. Um, lo and behold, this 53 Mercury four-door front seat is 58 inches wide and fits perfectly. Um, so here I'm pulling it apart, taking these little uh, garnishes off. I'm going to pull the back off and uh, start stripping down the base. Um, strip down the base, clean it up a little bit, knock off the studs for the, for the seat base, and... Uh, and then uh, start working on, on upholstery layout. What I'm doing here is just knocking down the rust. I cut those studs off and uh, just cleaning up the bases a little bit. I'll spray a little paint on them, but um, at some point I'll probably have to weld some risers on, you know, to adapt them to the uh, to the floor pan. But uh, just getting them cleaned up right now. I want to have a nice clean working surface. Want to get some uh, rattle can black paint on, you know, so I'm not dealing with rust and getting my upholstery all messed up. So here you'll see me pulling the hog rings, uh, just grabbing them with some channel locks and uh, bending them, bending them till they're open, pulling them out. Um, I'm doing that both because I'm cheap and I'll probably reuse some of these hog rings from 1953. And also because uh, you want to try to pull off as much as you can, try to pull off the seat covers as they were and then cut the seams so you can use them as patterns. Um, as you'll see that kind of deteriorated on me and I didn't end up doing that, but, but that really is the goal though. It makes it a lot easier on yourself when you're sewing to have templates to match your fabric to, um, and definitely take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'm not an upholstery guy. I'm a guy that went down to Goodwill and paid $35 for a Singer sewing machine and watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to sew. And I'm after a handful of seats i'm starting to get sort of good at it I, not great at it but i'm getting sort of good at it so um this is just mainly a a little bit less a how-to and a little bit you know a handful of tips and, and encouragement that you guys can do this it's not that complicated it's not that hard it's a little intimidating i was intimidated too but um you can do it and if you don't want to pay a thousand dollars to have your seat recovered, you can do it for about, I think I've got $60 and some time into this seat. So yeah.
it's it's very achievable as you'll see Now the old uh, foam was no good. I had to toss it. Um, foam and cotton batting, but I am going to reuse the original burlap. Um, this original burlap had wires run through it, but I'm also going to add my own piece of burlap. Um, just if you know, the burlap helps you keep separation between your foam and the seat springs. It keeps it from chewing up your foam. Uh, you know, all those bumps and vibrations as your butt grinds on that foam, you know, you don't, you don't want to get pinched in those springs and wearing through those springs. Um, so the burlap is a nice barrier for that. It'll help your seat last longer. Okay, here's another little trick I do because I'm really cheap. I found some free restaurant booth seats a while back. Somebody had out on the curb and they look like hell, but what they had in them was really good quality foam and foam is expensive. So I just tucked that foam away. I, I save it. I burned the rest of the bench seats and keep them kept some of the springs. And uh, what you see here is because the bench seats were too narrow, I cut it in half and I put the best foam out where your butt goes and I use some batting and I'll use a little bit other different type of foam to fill the middle where nobody's ever really going to sit. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to keep costs down. I mean, foam for this project alone would have been 40 or $50 at least. And that's on sale. Um, just, it's just expensive, but, uh, old couch cushions can sometimes work i don't think the foam's quite as good in those generally with with restaurant booths if you can find that kind of stuff or other bench seats out of cars that are in good shape and free um it generally is a, a denser and better foam for this kind of project um you can see i'm starting to do my layout here on on material everything's kind of self-explanatory as we go but uh i'll try to narrate a little as we as we work along here
So here you can see I'm starting to get everything kind of laid out. I'm getting it cut out. Um, one of the biggest tips I can give you for this is just to try it. I mean, try making some seat covers, you know. You don't have to make upholstery on your first go. Try just a seat cover. Um, don't be afraid of messing up. You're going to mess up. That's how you learn. I've messed up a handful of seats that I had to do over again. And some of them I still have sitting. I just haven't gotten back to them because I was so disheartened by the amount of time and effort I put into them just to find out that it just wasn't working. I had it wrong. Um, do as much measuring as you can. You can kind of see me flying through this a little bit and not measuring that much. This is a really simple seat pattern that I'm doing. Um, and I've done a few. And it's still not going to turn out perfect. I can tell you that right now. But it's going to be all right. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep learning. Uh, this seat turns out just fine for a driver. You'll see that at the end. Uh, I'm just doing the base in this video. But um, I'm not going to do the back. Uh, it's basically the same process for the back. but. Really just trying to show you guys how this can be done on the cheap and with very little experience, just self-taught some YouTube videos. Um, there's one good tip is using these pins, pin your work together. It'll, it'll help you a lot. And that was a hard learned lesson because as you run this stuff through the sewing machine, stuff gets, un, you know, you have it lined up and then it's not lined up anymore. And all of a sudden you've sewn stuff really crooked and you have to go back and cut thread seams out and sometimes you have to throw pieces away and uh yeah pin your stuff together pin it pin it together keep it together and then don't forget to pull the pins out because you do not want to sit down on one of those Here's another tip that helped me quite a bit. Um, use a thin, thin piece of foam sewn to the back of your material. Uh, the first couple seat covers I did, I could not figure out why they were so baggy and loose fitting and just not plump and, and correct seeming. Uh, so, so use some backing material because the thread will pull through the foam. So you have to use some like, old t-shirts or some old whatever, you know, something to, as a backer for it, but sew some thin like quarter inch foam to the back of your seat cover. It'll make it plump. It'll make it full It'll make it really cushy and your cover will look a lot better when it's all said and done. You can see me using an old t-shirt right here, something I would normally use as a shop rag, but I'm using it as a backer right here to uh, keep my thread from pulling through because I'm going to sew some pleats in on this on each side for the where your butt goes just to make it a little grippier some pleats will give it some texture and, and keep you from sliding down the seat
whatever reason, I did not film much or any of me finishing and installing the seat cover. Um, I reused a lot of the hog rings. You can see my end panels were not quite the right shape and it caused some wrinkling. Um, the way this seat has those those uh, trim pieces that bolt onto it, the metal trim pieces, you won't really see that, but it turned out good. See, you can see there it's covered up a little bit. Um, and I got a picture of it in the truck, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you guys like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.